Right, today's lecture is making and hearing whole tunes. Now, this is really the third of three talks we have on what you might call the anatomy of the word group. First, you had one from Mr. Maidment about the nucleus and the tail. Then you had one from me about the pre-nuclear patterns. Today we put the two things together into complete tunes. The O'Connor and Arnold system, which we generally follow, <coughs> recognizes well, altogether ten basic tunes, nine of them simple ones, and one a combination. Each of these tunes combines a particular head, different heads we discussed, with a particular nuclear tone, the various nuclear tones that we've discussed. And the resultant complex head plus nuclear tone has a special name, the name of that tune. And the name is chosen uh, in a way that's meant to remind you of its overall shape. I must say these names haven't really been very <coughs> widely or generally adopted. People seem to still find them quite difficult to remember. <coughs> and most authors will still speak of things like high head, low fall, rather than using its special name of uh, low drop, or whatever it might be. There's also this compound tone, which is the fall plus rise, uh, which has within it two nuclear tones. I'm dividing these in a way that isn't found in the book into three groups, overall falls, overall rises, and overall fall rises, falling rising tunes. And we really look basically at the nucleus here rather than at the head in order to make this classification. So there are, first of all, four kinds of falling tunes. They're both on the screen and on the handout. First of all, we have high head plus high fall, which gives you what we call a high drop. So with the example, I've got a standard sentence on the handout, I'll use over and over again. This gives you, she's the very person I was thinking about. She's the very person I was thinking about. And there you will notice the low pre-head, the high head, stressed with an X, high fall, and of course, a low level tail. She's the very person I was thinking about. <laughs> now, we don't have to have all of those elements present. As we've seen, it depends upon the words actually used within the word group, whether you're going to, for example, have a pre-head, whether you're going to have a tail, and so on. And we might <coughs> even not have a head, in which case the difference between the high drop and the low drop disappears, except insofar as it's reflected in the use of a high prehead, which would give you the type of high drop. Number two, then, is just the same, except it has a low fall. So we get high head and low fall, like this. She's the very person I was thinking about. She's the very person I was thinking about. this lecture we don't really discuss the meanings of these patterns, but we can see, for example, that this complex of falls very often has a meaning of finality, or as Grasl puts it, of declaring, proclaiming. So we might have, for example, that's the end of the story. That's the end of the story. Just try it all together after me, that's the end of the story. That's the end of the story. Once again, that's the end of the story. Now, let's do the same thing, but with a low fall. Now, the difference here is that we're being less involved in it. That's the end of the story. It's quite warm and involved. But if you say that's the end of the story, that's much more factual. You don't wish to discuss it any further. Listen to the end. That's the end of the story. That's, that's the, the end, end of the story. story. Again, that's, that's the, the end, end of the story. story. All right, that's what they call the low drop. 
low drop at the end. Right, the remaining two kinds of fall are more fun. More interesting. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, the high head and the rise fall. Remember the rise fall tone? Duh. Ah, thinking about. With a high head, we get, for example, she's the very person I was thinking about. She's the very person I was thinking about. This one they call the jackknife. Why? I haven't actually got a visual aid with me, but a jackknife is like a Swiss army knife, a pen knife, which folds and you can fold it into that shape when you're opening it out. So that's a jackknife, that's why it's called a jackknife, to remind you of the rise fall. In my <coughs> graphic clip art, I was able to find this nice arrow which uh, starts rising and then decides to fall instead. Ah. Whenever I give this kind of demonstration to native speakers of English, the rise fall elicits a laugh or a giggle from people. <laughs> yeah, just like that. I say, she's the very person I was thinking about. And they go, uh, <laughs> And this is an important cue to what it means. <clears throat> it uh, has all sorts of special implications. It can be skittish and coquettish, amongst other things. It can also be impressed and involved. Anyhow, that's the, that's the jackknife. The last of the falling tunes is the one made up of a rising head and then a high fall. Do you remember the rising head? Da 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 da. da. Mm. And it always has a high fall at the end of it. This one they call a long jump because it reminds you of a runner. Da 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 da. da. <laughs> Takes his long jump at the end. It sounds like this. She's the very person I was thinking about. She's the very person I was thinking about. Again. She's the very person I was thinking about. All right. All of those could also be combined with a high prehead giving you, she's the very person I was thinking about, or she's the very person I was thinking about, or she's the very person I was thinking about, or she's the very person I was thinking about. Right. Those were the following tunes. Nothing new there, really, just combining elements that we've dealt with already. Here are the four tunes that give you an overall rise. The rising you go down. Well, have I been a bit naughty? Because the first one isn't really a rising nuclear tone, it's the level nuclear tone. Da, which actually has a meaning very, very similar to the low rise. The difference of meaning between the terrace tune, high head and mid level, and the low bounce tune, high head, low rise, is very difficult to formulate. They often seem to be used in just the same way, meaning we haven't come to the end yet. That's the end of the first part. That's the end of the first part. That's the end of the first part. The first part. Now this is the first part. That's a terrace tune. Now this is the, that's a high head. First part, there's the level. And now we come to the second. Alternatively, now this is the first part. Now this is the first part. Now this is the high head. First part, low rise. And now we come to the second. So both of them can be used in this meaning of leading on to something that's following. That's why I've put them together. In the handout, we've got examples. First of all, uh, I'm afraid I've got them in the wrong order compared with the board. So if we look at the low bounds first, she's the very person I was thinking about. She's the very person I was thinking about. You try it. She's, She's the very person I was thinking about. That's right. You have to drop down after was. She's the very person I was. That's all high level. Thinking about. Once more. She's the very person I was thinking about. All right. Then the terrace tone. We have a different kind of drop, just a little bit, a step down to a level. She's the very person I was thinking about. She's the very person I was thinking about. Unfinished. The uh, high head also combines with the high rise to give you the so called high bounce. She's the very person I was thinking about. She's the very person I was thinking about. 
this can either sound rather truculent and defiant, there are some people who are very combative and use this kind of tone all the time. That's what I think. <laughs> Just got to accept it. I won't accept any arguments. She's the very person I was thinking about. <laughs> or it can also be used just to mean, uh, to turn the thing into a question. Is that what you really said? She's the very person you were thinking about? Well, well, I am surprised. <coughs> so that's another possible meaning. High bows. Listen again and then do it after me. She's the very person I was thinking about. She's the very person I was thinking about. All right. And the last one, the low head and low rise. This is called the takeoff. Remember the low head? And the low rise. Duh. So here you must think of an aircraft. It taxis out to the runway in the prehead, then accelerates down the runway in the head, and when it gets to the takeoff point, then it's a low rise. We're not interested in what happens later. We just want to get off the ground. So it sounds like this. She's the very person I was thinking about. She's the very person I was thinking about. Why, she's the very person running along the runway. Rotate, thinking about. <laughs> and we go up into the air. She's the very person I was thinking about. Yes, the takeoff. Take, the takeoff and the phrasal verb to take off have a number of different meanings in English, which you could look at in your dictionary afterwards. For the time being, we're talking about the aircraft meaning here. Now, the last group of tunes in my grouping is the falling rising ones. <coughs> These <laughs> I put together because people often find it difficult to distinguish between them. I feel them to be very sharply distinct in meaning, although obviously they're very similar in tune shape. One of them is the single, simple tune, the falling head and the fall rise. Remember when we did the falling head? Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. It gets a da, a full rise after it. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. And um, this combination, McConnell and Arnold, call the switchback. What's a switchback? A switchback is one of those things you get on a fairground or a lunar park, as it's called in some languages, where you go round and whew, down and then up again, da -da 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 -da, and round and down and round and up on a kind of crazy railway. Well, one of the things you do in the switchback is go and come up again the other side. And if it's got a falling head before it, you go yeah, yeah. You can see how it reminds you of a switchback. It's what the Americans call a roller coaster. We sometimes call it a roller coaster too. But it's over a British name, it's a switchback. All right, da 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 da. That's the pattern we've got. Da, 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 da. She's the very person I was thinking about. She's the very person I was thinking about. Once again, she's the very person I was thinking about. And the other one, the high dive, this is the combination of two nuclei, where we have a four, a high four nucleus, and also another subordinate nucleus, which is a low rise. <coughs> and these can be rather distantly linked to one another. After all, you could have two successive tone groups where the first one is a fall and the next one is a rise. But they're often rather more intimately linked. For example, the rise part often gives you, is often used for some kind of afterthought. That's Mary, I think. That's Mary fall, I think, afterthought. Razzle's proclaiming plus referring. <coughs> Often, though, they're even more closely, more intimately linked, as uh, when Prime Minister Macmillan, many, many years ago, uttered the very memorable comment in a political speech, the future lies before us, which sounded extremely impressive and heavy and weighty, but actually says nothing at all. The future <laughs> lies before us. <laughs> history lies in the past. <laughs> you see, there we go. <laughs> For the subject of the sentence, da da, made em emphatic with a high fall, and then the last lexical item gets a low rise. Well, this combination can, of course, then have a head, a high head before it. Da 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 da
high dive. What do you do when you do a high dive? Well, again, you might have a diving board that you walk along. Then you dive into the water. Underwater, you turn round. And when we next see you, you're coming up out of the water again. <laughs> you seem to have some kind of flying fish ability. But, um, well, this pattern shows nicely what happens. You have a da, da. That's Mary, I think. The future lies before us. Do close the window. Try not to be such a fool. Or the example on the handout. Well, I had a problem with the examples on the handout because if I'd applied it with the same place of nucleus as I'd done previously, it wasn't really very plausible. So I've given you two versions, one of which shifts the first nucleus onto very like this. She's the very person I was thinking about. She's the very person I was thinking about. Once more. She's the very person I was thinking about. All right, we've got two nuclei, then one on very, one on think. And the other possibility, I've changed the words at the end so that it's uh, a little bit more than about, which is, has no real meaning of its own. Uh, giving you, she's the very person I was thinking might come. She's, she's the, the very person I was thinking might come. I hope the grammar of that is clear to everybody. <laughs> it means, well, I was thinking that she might come. She's just the person I was thinking might come, or with this intonation, she's the very person I was thinking come. Once more. She's, She's the very person I was thinking might come. Yeah. So, there we've got the ten different tubes, the ten different combinations. And if your teacher is doing material from a Conan Arnold intonation of colloquial English, you would have practiced uh, a selection of them. Uh, and even if not, I'm sure you would have done similar kinds of things. It does represent, I have to be honest, a selection from the entire range of what is possible in English. But I think it's a, a reasonable selection. We can't give you absolutely everything because you could never remember it at all. As it is, you maybe will have considerable difficulty in remembering ten different tunes. And you may want yourself to make a selection from among them. But I thought we'd move on now and consider some of the problems of actually producing whole tunes. Now, those of you who are at a fairly early stage of spoken English hardly need to use intonation. If you find it difficult to put together three words in English, then there's no scope for intonation. But when you're very fluent, if you speak very fast, and perhaps with a very bad pronunciation, but at least a great deal of it, then intonation <laughs> is very useful, because <laughs> <laughs> intonation may make it easier for us to understand what on earth you're talking about. <laughs> I think you know which national groups I'm aiming at in both of those remarks. <laughs> both things are important. You have to get fluency so you can put the words together at speed, but you also must superimpose an intonation on them if you're to understand what's what. Well, I think the first thing in practicing the shapes is to practice the nuclear tone and the tail. So you practice doing a high four. Da 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 da. Low four. Da 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 da. Rise four. Da 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 da. Low rise. Da 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 da. High rise. Da 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 da. Four rise. Da 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 da. And four plus rise. Da 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 da. When you can do all those, then practice them with heads as well. So we've got high four. Da da da. We do it with a high head. Da 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 da. Or with that rising head, da 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 da. And then perhaps we make use of the emphatic heads, the stepping head, da 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 da. Or the emphatic climbing head, da 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 da. Practice all those things. Lastly, add the pre head. If you've got an actual tune that you want to do, because it's written down and you, your teacher tells you to say it aloud, Modify this by making it negative and therefore likely to have what intonation pattern? Well, if it's negative, it'll probably have a switchback, four rise. Let's have a four rise at that point, four rise nucleus at the end. What kind of head do we usually get with the four rise nucleus in the switchback pattern? A falling head. 
So maybe you're given that. If you want to say that aloud, first of all then, get the nuclear tone. There's not much of a tale here, just one syllable, so you've got to frankly this story. Story. Everybody say that. Story. 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 Then we add the head, giving like this. From don't we got to have a steady before we come to the four eyes. Don't think that's the end of the story. Don't no. think that's the end of the story. Again. Don't, don't think, think that's the end of the story. And last we do it with a free head. Let's have a low free head. I don't think that's the end of the story. I don't, I don't think, think that's the end of the story. There you are, perfect. <laughs> so rather than trying to do it all at once, which might be too difficult, build it up in these stages. If you're undergoing an examination, of course, then you have to do this within your head and then finally come out with the perfect result. But when you're practicing on your own or in a class, this is a sensible way to do it. Equally, when you are trying to plan the intonation, it's often helpful to think which is the right nuclear tone for this group, and then to think what's the right head and what's the right free head. It is best to start at the end and work back, in other words, rather than to start at the beginning. And the same applies when we try to listen to whole tunes. Hearing whole tunes, identifying what they are. <coughs> Supposing you get, I don't think that's the end of the story. I don't think that's the end of the story. You've got to work out what's the right pattern. First of all, locate the nucleus. I don't think that's the end of the story. Well now, any suggestions where the nucleus might be? End. End. Let's try it. Let's listen just to the shape of the nucleus plus tail. I don't think that's the end of the story. End of the story. We've got a low tail, low level tail. High ball, low level tail, which is just what we expect. End of the story. Okay? If you find that from the nucleus to the end, doesn't give you a pattern that you recognize as one of the nuclear tones plus tail, then perhaps you've made a mistake about the location of the nucleus, and you should go back and try that again. All right, having got the nucleus and the tail, then you can start listening to the type of head. Now, do you remember we talked about the onset as being the first syllable in the head, the accent, the strongly pitch-marked syllable at the beginning? Let's see if we can say where the onset is. I don't think that's the end of the story. I don't think that's the I don't think that's the Where's the onset? I don't know if that's the I don't know. It's here. So that's the beginning of the head. And the point about the onset is that you must listen for its pitch. What's the pitch of this onset? I don't think that's the end. It's low. I don't. So this is going to be some kind of low head. Is it a low level head or is it a rising head? I don't think that's the. I don't think that's the. I don't think that's the. It's going up. So it's a rising head. I don't think that's the. Lastly, identify the type of free head. Well, now that's all that's left. I. <laughs> I don't think that's the end of the story. I. Is that high or is it low? High. It's high. So what we've got is high free head, rising head. I call nucleus, and of course low tail. And it's all done by a sequence of quite easy logical steps, if you take it bit by bit. But unless you're very good at intonation, you may find it difficult just to immediately recognize the whole thing. Okay, I we had low rise, high fall. We did have one student in the examinations this year who was like that, could do it instantaneously. Anything you offered, immediately would come back the answer with the whole, all of the different bits. But that's unusual, that kind of ability. Most people have to take it step by step. And as I say, look at, ask yourself one question after another, and in that way, you ought to succeed.
Right. Oh, I just remembered something. <coughs> now, some practice. You've got to identify now what I say. You've got it in orthography on the handout and in transcription on the board. So all you have to do is listen to the pitch pattern. Here's the first one. Whatever made you think of that? Write it down. Whatever made you think of that? 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 First of all, we locate the nucleus. Whatever made you think of that? That is the nucleus. Let's underline it to remind ourselves. Whatever made you think of that? What's the nuclear term? That. No form. That. That. No form. Now let's look at the head. Whatever made you think of... Ever made you think of... It's a high level head. Yeah. Ever made you think of... Whatever made you think of that? Prehead? What? No. Whatever made you think of that? There, there it is, the marking then. It's, <coughs> it's the uh, pattern that we call a, high, uh, a low drop. High head and low fall. Whatever made you think of that? Okay. Here's another one. Whatever made you think of that? 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 Um, whatever made you think of that? Nucleus, still that. Uh, What's the tone? That. I fall. I fall. Whatever made you? Ever made you think of? Ever made you think of? Rising head. Whatever made you think of high prehead? Whatever made you think of that? Whatever made you think of that? Whatever made you think of that? <coughs> so here we've got uh, basically the rising head and the high fall, the long jump pattern. Anybody want to have any anything compared and contrasted? Let's move on to number two then, two A and two B. First version. But couldn't we leave it till Friday? I'm not using the right segments. But couldn't we leave it till Friday? But couldn't we leave it till Friday? <laughs> but couldn't we leave it till Friday? Yes, I said Friday the first time around. <coughs> Consistency is all. But couldn't we leave it till Friday? Couldn't we leave it till Friday? Where's the nucleus? Friday. Friday. What's the nuclear tone? Friday. Rise. But couldn't we leave it? There's the onset on. Could. Couldn't we leave it till what's the pattern there? Does it go up? No, it doesn't. Does it go down? No, it doesn't. It stays level and it's high. <laughs> <laughs> but couldn't we leave it till Friday? And the low pre -head. But couldn't we leave it till Friday? Couldn't we leave it till Friday? So high head, and low rise, and low bounce pattern. And another version of this same sentence. But couldn't we leave it till Friday? But couldn't we leave it till Friday? Sorry, I must remember to say Friday. <coughs> but couldn't we leave it till Friday? You can see which is my default pronunciation of the days of the week. <coughs> but couldn't we leave it till Friday? But couldn't we leave it till Friday? But couldn't we leave it till Friday? Where's the nucleus? Friday. No, not Friday. Now listen again and try and locate the nucleus correctly. 
But couldn't we leave it till Fridays? <laughs> couldn't. couldn't. <laughs> you miss this right early on. But couldn't we leave it till Friday? Well, we've got a steady, <laughs> steady high rise from that point onwards. So that's our high rise nucleus. No head, no prehead. But couldn't we leave it till Friday? So it's the simple high rise <coughs> pattern in your high bounce. The first three versions we had had all got the nucleus at the end, which is the usual position. But you must always be on the lookout for early placement of the nucleus. And uh, speakers of Spanish in particular notice that this is quite frequent in English. And it's a typical thing that Spanish learners don't do to place the nucleus earlier than at the end. Equally, therefore, you don't hear it when we do it. Right, let's move on to some more practice. Why didn't you say so before? 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 Four. Nucleus is on four. What's the nuclear term? Before. Four, four, rise, rise four, four. <laughs> Ends low, right, rise four. The head, well the head starts right at the beginning now, because the onset is the Y. Why didn't you say so? What's the pattern high? Why didn't you say so before? Why didn't you say so before? The pattern? The jackknife pattern. Why didn't you say so before? Alright? Here's another version. Why didn't you say so before? 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 So before? So before? Nuclear still on four. What's the nuclear term for? Oh. Crash down. I fall. Why didn't you say so before? Now, what kinds of heads have we got there? Why didn't you say so before? It's the emphatic rising head. Starts at the bottom, goes up. Why didn't you say so before? The bouncing head then. And the high four. Long jump down. Why didn't you say so before? <clears throat> I haven't had time to read their report. I haven't had time to read their report. I haven't had time to read their report. So I have managed to make a few notes on it. I haven't had time to read their report. I haven't had time to read their report. Where's the nucleus? Read. Yes, I haven't had time to read their report. Yeah. So we've got a rise on the tail of four on the nucleus, four rise. Read their report. What about the pre-nuclear pattern? I haven't had time to head onset is have. Haven't had time to haven't had time to yes, but not high level. Haven't had time to <whistles> falling head as is usual with a fall rise. I haven't had time to read that report. I haven't had time to read that report, no pre-head. And the whole thing then fall rise pattern is sort of.
Tell me if you want it compared with anything else. Even though this isn't an air training class, we can treat it like one. Huh? Well, let's move on to number four. I haven't had time to read their report. 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 Nucleus? Report. Report. No four. Onset have. I haven't had time to read their still high level, high level head. No free head, high level head, and no four. I haven't had time to read their report. No drop. Frustrated as that. <laughs> All right. If so, there's no need to make such a fuss about it. There's no need to make such a fuss about it. There's no need to make such a fuss about it. There's no need to make such a fuss about it. There's no need to make such a fuss about it. Fuss is the nucleus, good. There's no need to make such a fuss about it. Fuss about it. Down and up again. All right. There's no need to make such a fuss about it. Onset, there's no need to make such a... No. There's no need to make such a... Well, we've got here the emphatic version of the falling head. Two separate falling patterns. No need to make such a. There's no need to make such a fuss about it. There's no need to make such a fuss about it. The switch frame pattern. And the next one. There's no need to make such a fuss about it. There's no need to make such a fuss about it. There's no need to make such a fuss about it. Yes, you can tell the nucleus there is on need, isn't it? There's no need. High fall nucleus early on. Stresses in the tail make such a fuss on such or not fuss about it. Difficult sometimes with these long tails to decide what the rhythm is, whether we've got four stresses, need to make such a fuss about it, or whether it's more sensible just to treat it as having two. No need to make such a fuss about it. I go for the latter analysis, so I'm not going to mark those. What about the head? There's no, there's no low free head, and high head, high level head. There's no need, there's no need, there's no need, there's no need to make such a fuss about it. You try it. There's no need to make such a fuss about it. Again, there's no need to make such a fuss about it. All right. Next one. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. 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 Can't be helped. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Nucleus is waiting. What's the nuclear tone? Terrace, yes, it's the mid level. I'm sorry to have high head kept you. Waiting. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. You tried. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Let's have another one, a bit kinder. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Write it down. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. 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 Now, where's the nucleus? Sorry. Sorry. Yes, is that the whole answer? Where's the nucleus? 
waiting. Two nuclei. Uh. Ah. I'm sorry. That's a high fall. Kept you waiting. That's a low rise. Here we have that classic pattern. Fall plus rise, high fall plus low rise. That gives us our compound high dive pattern. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. And that's a much uh, politer and kinder way of addressing someone than to say, sorry to have kept you waiting. <coughs> I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. You tried. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry to have kept you waiting. Once more. I'm, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Notice the weak form of have and to have kept. There's a picture showing you triumphing at last. What a wonderful surprise. 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 Which is the nucleus? Prize. What's the nuclear tone? Prize. <laughs> Up and down again, rise, fall. What a, is a free head. One is the onset of the head. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful high level head. Wonderful, sir. What a wonderful surprise. What a wonderful surprise. You say it. What a wonderful surprise. Once more. What a wonderful surprise. What a wonderful surprise. What a wonderful surprise. What a wonderful surprise. Nucleus? One. Wonderful surprise. Nuclear tone? Wonder. Low fall. Wonderful surprise. What a wonderful surprise. What have we got before this? What a, what a, is that a head? No. Free head. Unstressed. What a unstressed high prehead. What a wonderful surprise. It would sound very dull indeed if you said a wonderful surprise. What a wonderful surprise. Your words would be belying uh, your attitude, or rather your attitude or intonation would be belying your words. But by using the high prehead and creating that pitch jump, do you remember one of the ways of adding emphasis? We add the suitable emphasis to say, but it's a surprise. What a wonderful surprise. Without being gushing or too full of emotion or some other patterns I give you. <sighs> That's all there is to it, I'm afraid. Where's the new kiss? Two. Two. Well, is that the full answer? That's all there is to it, I'm afraid. Two. Another one, I'm afraid. Here we've got this afterthought. I'm afraid. I'm afraid, which is added with a pattern of its own first part, that's all there is to it. That would be complete on its own, and that tells us that we're dealing with two separate word groups, one after the other. That's all there is to it. Where's the nucleus? Two. What's the nuclear tone? To it. <whistles> to it. I call. Now, this, I suppose, is something of an international idiom, inasmuch as this location of the nucleus might surprise you, because this is, after all, a preposition. Well, all I can tell you is that this phrase, that's all there is to it, is typically said either with the nucleus on the two or with the nucleus on the is, uh, which again is not exactly expected because that's the verb to be, but we either say that's all there is to it or we say that's all there is to it. We don't, as you might expect, say that's all there is to it or even that's all there is to it. No, we typically have the nucleus at the end. And I think that's an example of an intonation idiom and one of the things that we need and haven't yet got is a real dictionary of intonation idioms. Mm. Right. The rest of this I gave you with a high head. Oh. That's all there is to it, I'm afraid. Now, will you do it together after me? That's all there is to it, I'm afraid. Everybody? 
Again, we've got two groups, two word groups. What about the first one? That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. Where's the nucleus? It is. is. Oh, the other place that I told you it might come. That's all there is to it. Tone is to it. I fall. Uh, onset of head on all. That's all the. What head is this? All the. All the. Rising. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. I might have made it more interesting and said, that's all there is to it, with a high prelim. That's all there is to it, but I didn't. That's all there is to it. Second word group, I'm afraid. Nucleus, obviously, afraid. What's the nuclear term? I'm afraid. Afraid. Ah, all right. That's all there is to it. I'm afraid. That's all there is to it. I'm afraid. An afterthought. Softening out the thought. You try it. That's all there is to it. I'm afraid. Everybody? That's all there is to it. I'm afraid. Once more. That's all there is to it. I'm 